we? What do we come from? Who were they, those who came before us? We invite you to go with us backward into time on a journey of adventure and discovery, to seek for clues to the forgotten heritage of man, to uncover with us the long lost secret of the Maya temple. Adventure into the past this time will take us to the land of the ancient Maya, who a thousand years ago ruled in splendor over what is now southern Mexico and Guatemala. To guide us on our journey, we have with us one of America's best known anthropologists, the director of the University Museum of the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Frelich Rainey. I suppose no civilization has ever vanished, leaving behind it so many unsolved riddles so many unanswered problems as that of the Maya civilization. We don't know how it began. We don't know how it ended. When the Spaniards uh, conquered Mexico some 400 years ago, their priests destroyed practically all the Maya records as works of the devil. This may or may not have been a blow to the devil, but it certainly was a blow to us anthropologists and historians. We've been sitting up nights trying to piece the story together ever since. All anyone has to do is to look at their buildings and their sculptures to see that they reached a pretty high level of civilization. They were the only American Indians who had developed much beyond picture writing. Some of their books remain to us, like this. In spite of all they achieved, the Maya had no plow. They had no spade. And even though they built fine roads, they never made use of the wheel. Much of their energy was spent in the study of the mysteries of time and in the movement of the stars and the planets. Time was an obsession with them. They actually worshipped it. They covered their monuments and buildings with calendrical reckoning. They carved hundreds of monuments like this, recording their computations, which extended far into the past. On some of these monuments, we find accurate calculations extending over 400 million years. The Maya believed that uh, time periods were burdened to be carried by, to all eternity, by relays of bearers. Each year, for example, had a particular god who bore it, a god who was worshipped and propitiated. Each day or month or year could bring disaster or good fortune, depending upon the god who bore it, whether he was evil or benevolent. Every move they made from birth until death was determined by the particular god and a tendency at the moment. How the Maya ever got anything done under a system like this, it's difficult to see, but they did. They built magnificent cities, temples and palaces of stucco and stone, beautifully decorated. They placed their buildings on towering step pyramids. Ushmal and Copan, Tikal and Wachaktun and Chichen Itza, were as splendid in their architecture as Babylon or Nineveh or the fabled cities of ancient Egypt. As a matter of fact, Maya cities were not really cities at all. They were simply ceremonial centers, pyramided temples and palaces surrounding immense plazas. These plazas were deserted, except on market days or days sacred to religion. Then, high up on the terraces above the people, Priests would stage their fearful rituals, sometimes offering up human victims to appease the gods and overawe the peasants. The Maya had a peculiar way of building their temples, one over another, covering the first with a pyramid, then building a new temple on top of that, and so on. Sometimes a single pyramid is found to contain three or four others nested inside. Most of the Maya cities and the finest of their stone carvings were created within a 500-year period of tremendous activity and progress. And then, mysteriously, it all came to an end. In one city after another, building stopped almost overnight. 
when Maya history resumed, generations later, invaders had taken over. This new civilization lasted four more centuries. Then gradually, temples and pyramids fell into decay. The jungle crept over the dead city. For 900 years, the world forgot that the Maya had ever existed. What explains the collapse of the early civilization? For a long time, it was believed that the people migrated. Their land was worn out, so they abandoned their cities and farms and moved north to clear new land and build new cities. More probably, it was a revolt of the peasants against their masters, the priests and the nobles. With the death of the educated classes, building stopped, religion declined, and the civilization died. In time, the proud Maya became the patient, burden-bearing Indian of today. And then there is the question of where the Maya came from. Most authorities are now inclined to agree that their very ancient ancestors, like those of the other American Indians, originally came from Asia across Bering Strait. There are people in Southeast Asia who uh, built their temples on pyramids, not unlike the Maya. And then, of course, there are, in the Near East, the Sumerians and the Egyptians who built pyramids some 3,000 years before the Maya. Is this just a coincidence, or is there some connection? The Egyptians uh, built their pyramids as tombs, while, of course, the Maya never did. Or did they? In archaeology, the last word is never said. Take, for example, the recent dramatic discovery made at Palenque in southern Mexico. Palenque is a Maya city that flourished for centuries in ancient times. Then it died and was forgotten, completely. It lay hidden in the jungle until about 200 years ago. Though it was one of the first of the Maya cities to be discovered in modern times, only a small part of it has yet been hacked out of the jungle. So far, archaeologists have uncovered several fine temples and a large palace with many courtyards. Many of the buildings contain superb stone carvings. Dominating the main quadrangle at Palenque is an immensely high pyramid capped with a building called the Temple of the Inscription because its inside walls are partly covered with priestly computations. Only in recent years has a grant of Rockefeller funds made it possible for the Mexican government to begin clearing and excavating in earnest at Palenque. To take charge of the work at Palenque, the government picked one of Mexico's ablest archaeologists Dr. Alberto Ruth. From the very beginning of operations, Dr. Ruth had been fascinated by the Temple of the Inscription. Because of its height and because of the fact that it had never been explored, he felt sure that down inside, something interesting might be found. Others before Dr. Ruth had been impressed by the towering bulk of the pyramid. They had suspected that it might contain some surprises. But before, there had been no funds to work with. Particularly interesting to Dr. Roos was the floor of the temple, made of stone slabs, not of stucco as in the other Maya temples. In one of these slabs, there were some mysterious holes fitted with stone plugs. Archaeologists had been puzzling over these for years. 
Every archaeologist is at least half detective, eternally looking for the little clues that will break the case, like the cigarette butts murderers are always leaving behind them in the whodunits. Maybe they were to hold incense, or to hold rope for Eustace. Perhaps. But if that was so, wouldn't there be some place overhead for some block and tackle arrangement? Is there? No. Caramba, que es esto? Hmm? What is it? Let me have your trowel. Look, that wall, it doesn't stop at the floor. It goes on down past. Do you think there's another pyramid down under? Not with this construction. There's something odd here. Something I don't understand. What's up? We're going under this floor to see what's there. When you read about an archaeologist stumbling across some buried treasure somewhere, you can be sure of one thing. The stumbling was the end result of a lot of knowledge, a lot of shrewd deduction, a lot of good hard work, and very little luck. The treasure that turns up may not always be what he's looking for, but it is no accident that he found it. What Alberto Roots came across when he dug under the floor of his Maya temple was not the lower level temple that might have been expected. It was something absolutely new among Maya discoveries. A secret stairway leading down inside the pyramid. It's obviously heading away from the center of the pyramid. It could be an underground passage to some building nearby. All that trouble to block it off. I don't think it's just a passageway. There's something down underneath there. Didn't want anyone to find. Could it lead to some secret sanctuary? Perhaps it's a fire escape. <laughs> Whoever had set out to block off the stairway, for whatever purpose, had done a good job of it. Dr. Roos's men had to hack their way down, step by step, through a mixture of rock and rubble that time and dampness had welded into an almost solid mass. In the ten weeks before the rainy season put a stop to work, the crew was able to uncover only 23 steps. The next season was even tougher. The deeper they went, the damper it became, and the more solidly lime and water had bound the rubble together. That season, again, they did only 23 steps. Then the staircase turned back on itself toward the center of the pyramid. So it was definitely not a passage to another building. Spadeful by spadeful, they were digging toward some secret, 
a secret that had been kept for a thousand years. Before the third season was over, they reached a level corridor, and at its end, they came upon a grim discovery. Into one small stone coffer were crowded the skeletons of six people, sacrificed by the Maya priests to guard this place through eternity. Somebody of high rank, look, he had purposely before to see fire. Mm -hmm. But there was something else. In a wall, beside the coffer, was a great triangular block of stone, slightly ajar. The door to the secret of the temple. What is it inside an archaeologist that drives him out to the end of nowhere to live in unbearable discomfort, to accept hard work, isolation, and even danger? It is the hope that comes to every one of them every time he starts digging that this time he may hit the jackpot. Some discovery, some bit of evidence that will tell him something about the past no one has known before. A thousand years of dripping lime had transformed the chamber, but the carvings on its walls were still as magnificent as the day they were finished. Whatever the room was for, it must have had some extraordinary significance. Almost filling up the center of the chamber was an immense stone slab, intricately and beautifully carved, one of the most important works of art ever uncovered among Maya ruins. Perhaps the cover of a sarcophagus. That's impossible. Look at the size of that slab. It could not come down those narrow steps. What if the whole structure was built as a tomb? But we know that the Maya never built their pyramids as tombs. In our field, it's never safe to say never. Jacking up the slab was laborious, careful work. Always in Dr. Roos's mind was the risk of breaking it, but it was a risk worth taking, for underneath might lie something more important still. Listo. Cuatro. Listo. Cinco. Listo. All known facts about the Maya and their ways contradicted Dr. Roos's theory that this huge slab was the cover to a sarcophagus that this chamber and the pyramid within which it lay were built to entomb the remains of some great Maya personage. Listo. Dose. Listo. Rese. Listo. Cuidado! Listo. Uno. Listo. Dos. 
Listo. Right. Listo. If Dr. Ruth were right, every list of the jacks might be bringing him closer to the heart of an ancient riddle. Why the Maya built their pyramids. Listo. Ocho. This was the secret of the Maya temple. All that time had left of some forgotten Indian who in his day had been great and powerful. A thousand years ago, he had been buried here. His body richly decked in jewelry of jade, more valuable than diamonds or platinum to the Maya. Any day in the National Museum of Mexico City, you can see what he must once have looked like. They have reconstructed the body as it was when he was buried. The scattered jewelry has been reassembled. The jade mask, which had fallen to pieces, has been put together. And so he lies there again as the last man who looked upon him must have seen him on that day, 10 centuries ago, when they closed the sarcophagus. To you and to me, a curiosity to wonder at for a moment. But to archaeologists, more, much more. To the archaeological world, this discovery by Dr. Ruth is one of the jackpots of recent years. It takes us one step nearer the elusive truth. His discovery has shown that at least in one case, the Maya built a pyramid over a tomb much like the Egyptian. Uh, does this uh, demonstrate a connection between the Egyptians and the Maya, between the old and the new world? Perhaps not. But someday, someone, somewhere, may find another clue. And then we will know, and we will have established one more fact in the fascinating detective story.